So one approach they focus on uh, dynamics of neuron. Uh, so we consider the equation that represents the uh, dynamics that generate uh, neural activity or synaptic uh, plasticity. And uh, uh, by using this, uh, we, we reconstruct the brain activity and to, to investigate that. So uh, as you may know, uh, electrical circuit can be expressed uh, by uh, this diagram and it can be uh, formulated as some equations. Uh, similarly, neuron uh, can also be expressed as an equation. Uh, please imagine, for example, Hodgkin Huxley equation. And through some approximation, we can express this dynamics by the minimization of some cost function. Uh, here, the dynamics that minimize uh, cost function represents the neural activity. So uh, this time course is generated by uh, this uh, process that minimizes cost function. So this is one approach in new, uh, theoretical neuroscience. Another approach is focus on the information processing of the brain. So uh, brain is a machine that process the information and uh, it is considered that uh, brain process information using statistics. So for example, uh, if there is a, an apple nearby the wall, we usually don't think that uh, this apple is locked in the shape of the wall, but we uh, think that uh, a part of apple is covered by the wall. So such a inference uh, can be expressed by uh, statistical inference. Uh, for example, we usually we consider the Bayes, Bayes theorem to express uh, that uh, solution. And uh, that solution can be solved uh, by, me, uh, by solving the expectation that minimize uh, a cost function called free energy. So here, the process that minimize this free energy cost function indicate the process of uh, Bayesian inference. Uh, so the value that minimize this cost function indicate posterior ex expectation that it, that is uh, most plausibly explain the hidden uh, state uh, underlying our observation. So uh, this process indicate update of our expectation about the external world. And finally, we can uh, obtain the correct inference. And uh, it is considered that uh, brain performs Bayesian inference uh, in that manner. And the, this is the theory called the free energy principle. Free energy principle is a theory of brain proposed by Carl Friston and that state that uh, perception, learning, and action of biological organisms are determined to minimize variational free energy. And by doing so, uh, organisms can perform variational Bayesian inference of external world state. Here, uh, this is one example. So in this cartoon, we consider that uh, this dog is our agent that perform inference and the environment comprises uh, a person uh, who is a master of uh, this dog. And uh, here, uh, the mental state of this person uh, correspond to the hidden state of external world. And uh, uh, here, dog can observe only uh, see these uh, observation, observation signals and uh, this state, hidden state, uh, unobservable. So dog need to infer uh, the state. Okay. And uh, by doing so, uh, to do so, uh, dog 
employs some uh, posterior belief about the hidden state. And uh, those posterior states can be updated by minimizing uh, free energy cost function. So th this process uh, represent, uh, represent the, the optimization of uh, posterior expectation. And to do so, Doc also need to run the generative model that uh, generate uh, observation uh, from the hidden state because here there is a map from hidden state to observation, which is also unknown for the agent. So to do so, doc, uh, this agent uh, minimize free energy with respect to the expectation of parameter. And uh, here, this minimization process indicate the learning of uh, parameter that uh, best recapture the external world generative process. So this is a abstract. This is a this is a a view of the brain uh, based on the free energy principle, and a unique point of free energy principle is that it can uh, apply the same principle to the the generation of action. So next we consider that uh, doc have some preference about observation. And in this case, uh, this dog likes to get feed. And uh, to get uh, this feed or preference, uh, pre preferred observation, to consider it, uh, what is the best action uh, to maximize the probability to obtain this uh, feed. So to consider uh, to calculate the the uh, feed for the prediction about the state transition and uh, uh, consider the consequence of each actions here uh, it had three options and uh, this uh, optimization of option can be explained by the minimization expected free energy here uh, this free energy indicates the uh, free energy uh, expected free energy accumulated over future, which is a function of uh, policy or option. So uh, by choosing some action, then the trans state transition in the future changes. And then uh, depending on that, uh, different uh, free energy uh, can be realized. So uh, by choosing the action that minimize this expected free energy, uh, doc finally obtain the feed. So this is a explanation uh, of action generation and the optimization of sensitive behavior uh, in terms of free energy principle. But it, it is a, you know, it is based on a conventional Bayesian view of the brain and uh, which doesn't uh, address the neuronal substrate uh, that realize this uh, process. So our question is, what is the neuronal substrate that realize this, uh, uh, this uh, variational Bayesian inference on the free energy minimization? So we would like to know uh, its mechanism, neuronal mechanism. In other words, uh, free energy principle is a brain theory with high uh, abstraction level. So uh, this idea is originally come from uh, the 19th century uh, uh, physicist, uh, Helmholtz. Uh, his idea is that a human, human, uh, human sensation is uh, incomplete. So uh, we need to uh, complete such a, a incomplete information continuously, which is sometimes called unconsciousness inference. And uh, uh, Friston formulate that idea in, in terms of uh, variational uh, Bayesian inference and uh, uh, free energy minimization or surprise minimization. Uh, anyway, it, it is a, uh, it, its abstraction level is high. On the other hand, uh, there are many 
other theory about brain that has more you know, concrete uh, relationship uh, to the neuronal substrate or physiological basis. For example, uh, it is very known that uh, dynamics of a neuron can be expressed by Hosekin Huxley equation, and it can be reduced to a rate coding model through some approximation. Uh, also, for synapse, we know that uh, synaptic plasticity occurs depend depending on the timing of uh, firing uh, of the post synaptic neuron, the pre synaptic neuron, which is called spike timing dependent plasticity. And through some approximation, uh, we can uh, obtain the uh, well known Hebb's law. So here, Hebb's law indicates that uh, uh, this connection is strengthened when uh, pre and postosynaptic neuron fire together. So uh, in, in, from this point of view, uh, we can say that uh, we have some candidate uh, principle of the brain, like a frenzy principle. And also we have a theory of the brain component, uh, which have a tight uh, connection to the physiological basis. So, but those equations, or although those equations have uh, such a physiological background, uh, it is not clear, not very clear, how those equations realize the brain functions, higher brain functions. So we would like to know the formal link uh, that connect uh, such a equation with the brain principle. So we would like to address this, this domain. Okay. And to address this issue, we recently proposed a, a theoretical approach. So in this approach, uh, we start from considering the neuronal activity equation. Uh, so this, let's say this is the equation that generates neural activity. And uh, we consider that what is the, what is the biological plausible cost function that derive this equation. Uh, to, to obtain such an equation, we, we consider that, okay, uh, by taking the integral of this equation, we can get the original cost function because an integral is uh, just the opposite of the operation of derivation. So uh, by taking an integral, we can obtain the uh, biologically plausible cost function that is consistent with this neuronal activity equation. On the other hand, for free energy principle, uh, once we define the generative model of external material state, then we can uh, derive the variational free energy. We can define the variational free energy. And its minimization indicate the process of Bayesian inference. And our recent work showed uh, a equivalence between uh, these two cost functions. So this means that the, the, the quantities uh, that is, are derived uh, as the, the gradient descent on those cost function are uh, equivalent. So, uh, more uh, in other words, uh, we can say that uh, for any neural network dynamics that minimize some cost function uh, can have uh, interpretation in terms of Bayesian inference. So if we see the, such a neural network that is interacting with uh, external world state, uh, these dynamics can be cast as the uh, variational Bayesian inference, which follow the free energy principle. So in the reminding of today's talk, I, I do like to explain uh, this uh, theory uh, using uh, mathematics. Uh, so uh, in, in the next text session, uh, I would like to uh, explain 
about the uh, more detail, detailed mathematical uh, mechanism. Okay, so uh, yeah. So in this slide, uh, I, I briefly uh, define the, the mathematical basis of free energy principle. So free energy principles, so the original uh, purpose of free energy principle is a minimization of surprise of sensor input, or uh, here surprise in means the improbability of uh, our sensory input, for example, uh, if we see a chicken flying the sky, then uh, this is a very surprising uh, sensory input, visual input. So uh, at that timing, our, our surprise is high. Okay, but uh, if you if we experience uh, such a such a scene uh, many times, then we learn that uh, okay, this this is. A, this can happen, sometimes happen. So uh, once we learn this uh, information, then uh, our surprise is, it can be low even when we see this uh, scene. Uh, so what I would like to say is that surprise is such a subjective value. So depending on our uh, state or internal state, uh, we, uh, our surprise can change. And mathematically, uh, that surprise is expressed by the minus log of uh, probability of O. Here, M indicate the statistical model. So uh, this, this is a, not a actual probability of sensory input O, but it is a, a o, uh, o based on the statistic, statistical model uh, P of M. P, PM, okay. And uh, if the the probability is low, then uh, this minus log P becomes a large value. So uh, the purpose of free energy principle is a minimization of uh, this value. And to do so, we consider the generative model, which is a, a model that uh, contained the uh, all uh, quantities uh, related to the external world state. Here, O is observation, S is a hidden state, and theta is the uh, parameter that uh, characterize the generative model. And uh, this uh, can be decomposed like this. And for example, the first uh, conditional probability indicates the probability of O uh, when S and theta is given. So uh, this represents the mechanism that generate O based on a uh, hidden state. And the second uh, component indicates the, the mechanism that generates hidden state S and depending on the parameter theta. And the last one indicates the prior brief about the parameter. And uh, yeah, and, and uh, the inference is uh, conducted by updating the posterior belief about hidden state and uh, a parameter. So we, we sometimes assume that uh, posterior follows the Gaussian dispersion. In this case, the, the mean value indicates the posterior expectation and uh, uh, Variance, uh, covariance uh, correspond to our confidence about uh, this uh, value. And the, to, uh, to make the calculation uh, tractable, we usually assume the mean field approximation, uh, in which uh, we assume that uh, posterior belief about uh, hidden state is independent. Uh, of uh, that of a parameter, okay. Uh, I got a question that the mathematical equivalence of the cost function 
of neurodynamics and frenzy pressure imply that uh, frenzy can be tracked as a physical quantity. Yeah, uh, cost function for neural network uh, indicates the 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 cost function for the cost function of a quantity in the physical process. So that equivalence indicates, yeah, basically indicate the, uh, the the equivalence of the directional Bayesian uh, inference process and, and some physiological process. And uh, yeah, I, I think so. It, it, it is really uh, tightly related to some uh, physiological quantity physical quantity or physiological quantity and sorry uh, go back to the slide and uh, uh, this is a definition of uh, free energy uh, which uh, is the uh, upper bound of a surprise here the first term is equal to surprise and uh, the second term called callback rival divergence have has a non-negative value so that uh, the, this uh, can place an upper bound of uh, original surprise function. And uh, a merit of uh, using this cost function is that uh, by uh, some uh, transformation, we can obtain this form. Here, first term is uh, uh, minus log of uh, generative model, which is uh, tractable for uh, neural network. And the second term uh, is uh, entropy of a posterior. So we, which uh, play the role of regularizer that regulate, uh, regulate the, the posterior distribution from, for example, divergence or uh, converging to Reports value. So uh, by minimizing this uh, cost function variation of energy, uh, the agent uh, can achieve the variation of Bayesian inference. Okay. And uh, in the next slide here, uh, we we uh, explain the, our our proposition, our theoretical proposition. Uh, in the most uh, general way. Uh, as we see in the previous slide, uh, free energy minimization uh, realize the Bayesian inference. And uh, here we consider that uh, posterior expectation uh, composed of the uh, posterior of hidden state S and uh, uh, this is the action of agent and this is a parameter, and uh, this lambda indicate the hyperparameter. And uh, by uh, so, uh, free energy uh, can be approximately defined as the function of those posterior expectation and observation of. Uh, here, uh, one column T indicates the sequence of observation O from time T uh, from one, uh, time one to T. And uh, by uh, calculating the gradient descent on this uh, free energy function with respect to each element of theta, then we uh, get the solution. On the other hand, for neural network, uh, we can consider a similar process to, uh, that to generate uh, neural dynamics. Here, we suppose that neural network is defined by a set of uh, variables. Here, x indicate uh, neural activity in the middle layer, y indicate the neural activity of the output layer, and the w uh, is a synaptic uh, weight matrix, and the phi indicate uh, any other parameter, for example, firing threshold. And uh, we define the uh, cost function for this neural network uh, as L which is a function of observation and the internal state. Um, the minimization of this cost function indicate the generation of dynamics. So if, if this phi is X, then this becomes a equation of neural activity. If uh, 
this phi is W, then this equation indicates the synaptic plasticity. So in that manner, we can uh, consider that uh, neural dynamics, including neural activity and plasticity, uh, it is expressed by uh, this form of uh, gradient descent equation. And uh, our theory uh, proposed that equivalence between uh, this variational free energy and the neural network post function, which is uh, mathematically speaking, which is a corollary of a uh, complete class theorem. Um, in more detail, our proposition is that for any neural network that uh, minimize uh, cost function error, there is a generative model uh, uh, that can uh, match the variational energy with this uh, neural network cost function. So by choosing appropriate generative model, uh, we can assign we can assign variational free energy for any neural network uh, dynamics expressed um, in this form, which indicate that, uh, which implies that uh, recapturation of external dynamics is a uh, natural feature of uh, neural networks. Okay. Uh, yeah, from here, uh, the, this explanation is quite abstract. So uh, in the next slide, I, I'd like to uh, introduce you an uh, example, uh, which can be analytically solved. solved. Okay, uh, uh, from this slide, we consider the discrete state space uh, which is expressed by partially observed Markov decision process. For simplicity, we consider a very simple uh, POMDP or POMDP uh, in which we don't have any state transition. So uh, this uh, discrete variable S is generated uh, by following uh, this uh, prior distribution. Uh, and the prior is expressed in terms of categorical distribution D. And here we assume that S is a vector of binary vari variables. Okay. And uh, through uh, likelihood mapping A, uh, observation is generated. And this O is also a vector of binary values. So depending on the state of S, uh, th this A indicator, some stochastic mixture of uh, such a binary variables and uh, uh, following this categorical distribution, O is uh, randomly generated. And the process of Bayesian inference is a inversion of uh, this generative process. So to do so, agent compute the, uh, the expectation of A matrix and uh, then get the expectation of hidden state. And uh, this can be formulated uh, under the free energy minimization and uh, those are solution of uh, solutions. So they correspond to the parameters posterior and uh, state posterior. So by, by solving the, the variational free energy defined in the previous slide with uh, the generative model defined in this slide, we can obtain those solutions. On the other hand, for neural network, we can uh, we, we consider a simple uh, single layer feed for the network. Here, upper part uh, correspond to external or generative process that we generate uh, sensor input. So this uh, process is exactly equal to uh, this process in the uh, right, uh, left hand side. Uh, and the neural network uh, is uh, here. So uh, we have sensory input O 
and uh, by computing the the weighted sum of sensory input weighted by synaptic matrix W, uh, we get the neural activity X. So this is a, a type of neural network uh, uh, we consider in, in this uh, part. Okay. And uh, to, to characterize neural activity equation, uh, we start from considering the Hodgkin Huxley equation, which is an equation that generates a spiking activity. The Hodgkin Huxley equation comprises four nonlinear equations, which is too uh, hard to analytically compute. So we consider some reduction or approximation. Uh, it is known that M is uh, much high, uh, faster than other variable, and uh, the shape of H is similar to that, uh, that of minus uh, one minus N. So uh, through such a approximation, uh, we, uh, we obtain the 2D hosekin huxley equation, uh, which is expressed by uh, this such a such a uh, uh, nonlinear equation uh, in general. One famous example of 2D Hosky Huxley equation is the Fitzhugh Nagmo equation, uh, which characterizes neural activity using cubic uh, nonlinearity. However, in, in this study, we uh, consider a similar. Uh, uh, similar but different uh, uh, approximation, uh, which we call canonical neural model. The canonical neural model uh, have uh, inverse sigmoid function nonlinearity, which is an approximation of cub cubic uh, function. So uh, at the third order Terra expansion, they are uh, essentially the same. <laughs> and uh, we consider a network of this uh, canonical neural model. Uh, here, uh, it has uh, sensory, uh, so, sorry, synaptic input from a sensory uh, input O. And uh, W1, uh, yeah, you can uh, consider that W1 correspond to excitatory synapse and W0 correspond to inhibitory synapse and uh, this threshold factor uh, modulate uh, the excitability of neur neurons. And uh, this X dot indicate the change in the neural activity. So this change is determined by uh, leak factor with uh, sigma inverse sigmoid nonlinearity and synaptic input and some threshold. Interestingly, uh, if we consider the fixed point of this equation, uh, which gives the x that uh, makes x dot equal zero, then we get the uh, well-known uh, rate coding model uh, with sigmoidal activation function. So in some sense, uh, this canonical ne neural network uh, that we use is a uh, uh, approximation of uh, hodgkin huxley equation or Fitzhugh-Nagmo equation and uh, its approximation level is in some sense between the original Hodgkin Huxley equation and the rate coding model. So, anyway, we use uh, this equation to characterize neuro, neural activity. Uh, and uh, please remember this uh, form of equation. And uh, I'll go to the next slide. So, here I rewrite the same equation, uh, canonical neural network model. And our, our assumption is that this equation uh, have some cost function in the sense that uh, this equation is derived as a gradient descent from some cost function. We don't know the exact shape of that cost function, but if this relation is true, then we can compute the original cost function error because uh, if this is a derivative of uh, cost function error, then uh, by computing the integral of the right-hand side of this equation, then we can 
reconstruct the original cost function. So this is a, a original cost function of uh, this neural network model. And uh, we uh, employ some uh, new, new variable to, to represent this equation. But uh, please, please uh, just uh, consider that uh, by computing the derivative, we can obtain the original equation. So uh, here we use the phi instead of h. So it, it, phi also uh, correspond to firing threshold factor. And w hat uh, is a sigmoid function of uh, w. And uh, th this part indicate the block matrix. And those are block vectors. And the interestingly, uh, well, if, if we consider the, the next, we, if we consider the derivative of this cost function with respect to uh, W, then uh, we get the synaptic plasticity rule uh, uh, comprises Hebbian term with some uh, homeostatic plasticity term. This is non-trivial, right, because uh, we we just uh, compute this uh, cost function uh, from the neural activity equation, but that cost function derived from neural activity is also the cost function for uh, synaptic plasticity, as we expected. So uh, we confirm that uh, this cost function is a virus guy plausible for neural network in the sense that it. Uh, derives both uh, activity and plasticity. Okay, I found some chat message. Here, XT membrane potential or firing rate? Firing rate. Uh, we consider that, consider the uh, rate coding model, rate coding uh, activity. So it's not spike, but uh, uh, rate. Great. Okay. And uh, anyway, uh, in this manner, we uh, successfully obtained the cost function, uh, biologically plausible cost function for a neural network. Next, uh, for, for Bayesian inference for free energy principle, first we define the generative model for external world state, uh, which is expressed by uh, this equation this uh, joint probability. And once we define this, then uh, free energy is automatically computed, uh, which is uh, like this. And the first term is uh, a variation of free energy uh, as its definition, uh, although there is some approximation of small term, negligibly small term. And the second term, a second equation, uh, indicate a vector expression of uh, posterior expectation because here we consider the 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 discrete state space uh, s uh, indicate a block vector that represent a uh, posterior expectation sorry posterior expectation that each element of s uh, takes either one or zero so let's say upper half, half correspond to the probability that each element of S takes one and lower half correspond to that of uh, uh, taking zero, okay? And this uh, dot uh, indicate the in, uh, inner product. So by taking the weighted sum uh, here, then uh, we can obtain the entropy negative entropy, uh, sorry, uh, negative entropy of uh, state posterior, which is correspond to the first term in uh, this scale divergence. And uh, this part uh, correspond to the product of uh, parameter posterior and observation, which is uh, exactly correspond to the expectation of uh, minus log uh, uh, likelihood. And the final term 
correspond to uh, this uh, prior uh, distribution. So th this is a cross entropy term. Sorry, I uh, want. Uh, does this formulation only works for feed forward networks or can it formalize for a recurrent network? Uh, in the the la last part of the today's talk, I will explain the recurrent network. So it works for recurrent network as well. Anyway, uh, as you may uh, notice, uh, though the two cost function are mathematically equivalent uh, in the sense that uh, uh, their component uh, have formal correspondence because the first uh, term, uh, this block vector of S exactly correspond to this block vector of X and uh, its log correspond to this log of X. And uh, this term is actually the block matrix of A and uh, have the same form as this block vector, a uh, block matrix of W. And uh, the, this, inner product of A and O uh, is, is exactly equal to this, this operation, this product of Brock matrix and Brock vector. And the final term, uh, log D formally correspond to this term. So although those uh, cost function have, have a different background, one is uh, derived from physiological, physiological phenomenon or, or, and one is derived uh, based on statistics, but uh, they are they have the same structure, uh, which means that uh, we we can uh, we, we cannot uh, distinguish uh, those uh, two cost function essentially. So they are functionally have having the same meaning. So uh, by by showing this relationship, uh, we can say that for any neural network in this class we considered, uh, uh, they are following free Nazi principle uh, and perform performing uh, variation of Bayesian inference. Okay, so uh, in sum, uh, uh, we show that uh, the equivalence between neural network cost function and variational uh, free energy. Uh, which means the formal correspondences between uh, precise precise relationship between the uh, quantities derived from those cost functions. So neural activity uh, correspond to state posterior and synaptic strengths correspond to parameter posterior and firing threshold correspond to state prior. Okay, and the then I move to the uh, next part, uh, which addresses the experimental validation of this, this equivalence uh, between neural net and the uh, variational base using in vitro neural network. So uh, to address this issue, we design, we, we, we establish the in vitro uh, system that, that can stimulate neuron exactly the same manner as the generative process defined in the previous part. Again, the source uh, correspond to hidden state and uh, it, they generate uh, 32 sensory input. So they are binary signals uh, and uh, source one and source two are independent of each other. Okay, uh, through, some, through this stochastic mixture, we we generate uh, uh, satitude uh, stimuli and uh, those stimuli uh, transform to electrical paths that stimulate uh, cultured neurons. So uh, this device has uh, 64 electrodes uh, on the floor of this dish and we can uh, stimulate neuron and also record neural activity. And uh, yeah, one session correspond to uh, 256 time step stimulation sequence and training was performed for uh, uh, 100 sessions. Um, yeah, this is overview of experiment. So as I said, uh, we stimulate neuron using uh, stimuli generated from two uh, 
line of hidden states. So depending on their states, neuro, uh, sorry, uh, stimuli are generated randomly. And here, white dot indicate the spiking response and the white line indicate the high density response. So after stimulation, neuron fire uh, with high level. And uh, we, uh, uh, we, we found that uh, through this uh, process, cultural neurons self organize to assimilate uh, sen uh, sensory stimuli and, and uh, they successfully infer the hidden state. And by doing so, free energy computed uh, based on the neural activity, experimentally observed neural activity decreases uh, during this uh, training session. Here we compute computed uh, free energy based on the, the cost function defined in the previous part, previous slide, and uh, using the equivalence between neural network cost function and free energy, we, we obtained uh, this variational free energy value from the, the experiment, experimental data. So if we take the closer look of the result, uh, we obtain, we, we observe that uh, neuron, uh, three types of neural uh, groups, one group preferentially respond to source one and another uh, preferentially respond to source two. So those plot indicate uh, that, so each dot indicate uh, neuron, neural activity averaged over the, the session. And the x-axis indicate the response when a uh, hidden state is zero one, which indicate that source one is zero and source two is one. And y-axis indicate the response when uh, source state or hidden state is one zero. And uh, if we see the transition of this group, red group, then uh, we found that, uh, okay, uh, in this plot, we plot the, the change from the initial, uh, initial firing uh, rate, initial response intensity. So during this training process, uh, this, this group of neurons self-organized to response uh, higher to uh, source one, but not source two, because here green line indicate the response when source state is one one, and the red state red line indicate the response when source state is one zero, which means that irrespective of the source two state, uh, when source one is one, those neuron response uh, in the high level, but uh, uh, when source one is zero, then its response is low. So uh, based on this observation, we can say that uh, neurons, some neurons self-organize to express the source one encoding uh, activity. And uh, other, in another group, uh, neurons preferentially respond to source two, but uh, it, its dynamics is uh, almost uh, uncorrelated to source one dynamics. So those neurons are source two encoding. So based on this observation, our next question is, okay, uh, if the neural activity correspond to posterior brief about hidden state, then what, how about other, other com components, uh, other quantities in Bayesian inference? According to our theory, uh, neural activity is expressed, modeled like this, and the uh, Bayesian uh, posterior brief expressed like this. And we check the equivalence uh, or consistency between X and S now. And the next question is, if this is the case, then uh, is the role of, uh, role of uh, firing threshold that changes the baseline activity of neural, neural network is consistent with the role of uh, post prior brief of state that changes the, the behavior of uh, posterior belief. So we check this consistency next. 
So for simulated Bayesian inference, uh, uh, as uh, <laughs> this is a very known result, but uh, as uh, we know, uh, if we change the value of uh, state post state prior, then uh, inference is disrupted. So uh, in this task, uh, d equal d one equal zero point five correspond to the optimal prior belief about state. And uh, once we change the state, uh, upregulated or downregulated the state, uh, state prior, then uh, the Bayesian agent failed to perform correct inference because of this ill-posed uh, prior belief. And same uh, attenuation or same disruption of inference was observed when we changed the baseline activity, baseline excitability of new, uh, in vitro neural network using some pharma, pharmacological uh, treatment. So uh, if we change the excitability uh, by adding some drugs, uh, uh, we observe that both down regulation and up regulation of excitability uh, disrupted uh, the inference uh, performed by in vitro neural network. So we confirmed the, the consistency between the uh, Bayesian inference, uh, ideal Bayesian inference uh, agent and the uh, in vitro neural network. Okay. However, uh, this, those results uh, just say, ju just put some explanation or interpretation for uh, all the really known uh, biological phenomena, right? In the sense that, so uh, irrespective of the free energy principle or not, we can obtain this result uh, from in vitro neural networks uh, by, by performing some experiment. But so th this, this, this uh, work doesn't fully answer the, the you know, uh, usefulness of uh, free energy principle. So uh, the next question is uh, how free energy principles are useful to, to understand a neuronal process. So to answer that, we consider, we, we examine that uh, if whether free energy principle can predict the subsequent process of in vitro neural network, subsequent running or self organization process. Because if uh, only if free energy principle can uh, capture the, the law of self organization well, then its prediction uh, is consistent with the actual uh, process. But if not, uh, free energy principle cannot predict the subsequent result. Uh, even when even, even so, the free energy principle uh, can, can put some explanation. Uh, to the, the already known phenomena. So the prediction uh, ability is uh, such an important ability to uh, check the, 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 the plausibility of theory. So uh, in our in vitro model, in vitro setup, uh, we have two hidden sources and 32 uh, input. And uh, as a consequence of self organization, we observe the two different neuronal ensemble which encode source one and source two. Now, first we compute uh, connection strength W uh, through uh, cost function minimization uh, using neural activity data X, which uh, correspond to a conventional connection strength estimation. Uh, it is because uh, this is because uh, now we have the equivalence between L and F and uh, computing W that minimize F uh, is uh, essentially same as the conventional uh, conventional maximum likelihood of estimation uh, that obtain the like, uh, maximum likelihood estimated W using uh, the neural data, observed data X. So it is ju just uh, the fitting of data to the model. 
And by doing so, we can obtain the plausible uh, connection strengths uh, from data. Okay. And the, then in the left figure, left bottom figure, uh, here we plot the landscape of free energy, variational free energy, which is uh, purely computed theoretically. And according to the free energy principle, uh, neural activity and plasticity follow the gradient descent on the free energy. So if the theory is correct, then uh, connection strengths should follow this gradient. And I, I, then I, I show the movie uh, of the trajectory of uh, synaptic strengths. So I'll show it now. So this trajectory indicates the synaptic strengths computed based on uh, observed neural data. Uh, this, this is a statical estimation, conventional one. And uh, surprisingly, uh, as the free energy principle predict, we uh, observe that uh, this trajectory followed the uh, free energy gradient. So although it's not the exact, uh, so it, it's not exactly follows the gradient because uh, of some fluctuation or noise, but at, at least this dynamics is uh, highly consistent with the prediction of free energy principle that say that uh, synaptic uh, plasticity is it follows the gradient descent on the, this this theoretically computed free energy grade free energy landscape. So. This shows the consistency between the theory and the experimental data. And next, we consider the prediction. So now, if we compute X and W uh, that minimize L equal F in the absence of data, which correspond to, uh, th this correspond to the prediction of neural activity and plasticity using the free energy principle, because in the absence of data, this minimization is exactly the same as the simulation of neural dynamics and plasticity uh, following the free energy principle. So it is exactly the same as the Bayesian, ideal Bayesian observer uh, in the simulation. And uh, we check that uh, whether this, this dynamics is consistent with the experimental observation. So now we plot the the result of uh, synaptic trajectory. Uh, so in this movie, uh, the brighter color indicate the simulation in the absence of data. To determine the initial condition, we need to use the experimental data uh, in the initial 10 sessions, so which is expressed by the uh, darker color. And brighter color, uh, here exactly for this uh, free energy landscape because uh, which is uh, computed by theory. So uh, as we can see that uh, this theoretically computed trajectory is uh, very consistent with the experimental observation in the uh, left figure. And uh, uh, this is a plot of the final final value of synaptic weight at the session 100. And uh, we can see the tight correlation between uh, estimated or, or uh, uh, synaptic weight, which is obtained by neural data and the predicted synaptic weight computed by the theory, free energy principle. And uh, we check that uh, 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 as the average uh, correlation uh, coefficient uh, is uh, about 0.7 even at the uh, session 100, uh, which is obtained by the data from 23 independent experiment. Okay, which indicate that a free energy principle could predict the, the self-organization process of in vitro neural networks. So it in indicates the plausibility of free energy principle at least at the level of in vitro neural network. Okay. So 
let's move on to the final part. So in this part, we extend this the, the proposed equivalence to recurrent neural network. And to do so, we need to consider the generative process uh, which involves the state transition. Here, uh, state of hidden state is uh, transformed by B matrix, uh, which generates dynamics of hidden state. And uh, yeah, uh, this, this uh, schematic represents the, the behavior of Bayesian observer. So it observes the sensory input and the compute the model inversion and uh, obtain the state posterior. And this B indicates the process of prediction. And uh, to do so, uh, it uh, compute the optimal uh, action uh, uh, to minimize the risk in the future. So again, this delta indicates the action of the agent. So key here is that risk in the future is determined by a sequence of past decisions. So to minimize the risk, uh, we need to associate, the agent need to associate between the past event, past uh, decision sequence and the future risk. So this association is key to, uh, key to realize the planning and the uh, behavior optimization. To characterize this in terms of Bayesian inference, we consider the following uh, generative model here. Uh, the first two are basically same as the previous uh, generative model, simple generative model, but last one uh, is, is uh, unique. So here, uh, this process, this model indicate that uh, action is generated depending on the previous state and the future risk. So uh, this is not the process uh, in the real world, but uh, uh, what we model is that the, the agent assume such a uh, fictive causality to optimize its own action. And uh, this is model that indicate that uh, if uh, risk is low, then this agent assumes that its uh, past decisions are derived, uh, generated based on the optimal uh, policy matrix C. On the other hand, if the risk in the future is high, then the agent assumes that uh, the past decisions are generated by the suboptimal uh, suboptimal policy matrix. So by assuming this this mechanism, this fictive mechanism, uh, the agent try try to, uh, uh, to try to optimize its uh, own actions by associating future. Uh, risk and the past decision in a post hoc manner. Okay. And uh, the, the question, next question is what is the corresponding neuronal substrate? So it is well known that uh, heavy and plasticity is moderated uh, by various factors. For example, dopamine is a famous one. And here, uh, this plot showed the modulation of spike timing dependent plasticity by dopamine. Usually, STDP has uh, such uh, this uh, asymmetric uh, window, time window, but uh, in the presence of dopamine, its uh, window changes uh, in, a, in, in a both positive form. Okay, and more interestingly, the dopamine can modulate uh, heavy and plasticity in a post hoc manner. Uh, here in, in this plot, uh, only in the shaded area, stimulation that can uh, induce heavy and plasticity was induced. So heavy and plasticity occurred only in this shaded area, but addition of dopamine uh, after 
to second of uh, this uh, plasticity period can moderate the occurrence of plasticity in a post hoc manner. So it looks quite important to understand the neuronal mechanism, possible neural ne mechanism that associate future risk or future reward and the past decisions, actions. So we model this process uh, using the canonical neural network. So this is our model of neural network. So the neural activity equations are almost same as the previous one. So we again consider the inverse sigmoidal function and uh, this is synaptic input. But uh, unlike the previous one, here we consider the recurrent network. So K correspond to recurrent connections. And the Y correspond to output neural, neural layer. So this is Y uh, and its output uh, correspond to the, the action of this uh, neural network. And uh, for update of this connection from middle layer to output layer, we consider the modulated heavy and plasticity with, uh, modulated by uh, gamma. So th this rule uh, shows uh, the post hoc modulation of heavy and plasticity. Here, this bracket indicates the average of uh, pre-post uh, product uh, from past to present, okay? On the other hand, uh, this modulation uh, is man uh, multiplied uh, to this uh, average, but this value indicate the value of the, pre uh, so th this is a present value. So this product in indicate the product of the current risk and the past uh, decision and uh, observation. So this uh, the update of synapse based on this product is sufficient to associate future event represent here and past event represent here. So uh, we found that uh, this form of update rule is sufficient to uh, attain the optim uh, optimization of actions. And interestingly, we found that those equations are derived from uh, cost function shown here. So uh, th this is uh, derived uh, as a gradient descent uh, on the common cost function error. And if this is the case, then we can assign the corresponding variation of energy. So we found that this neural network cost function is formally correspond to the free energy uh, under some generative model. So as a result, we, we found that uh, if we assume the generative model uh, shown in the previous slide, then that generative model formally correspond to the neuronal process or synaptic process uh, of the mo delayed modulation of heavy and plasticity uh, shown in the, the last slide. So uh, we show the consistency between the, this type of neural network dynamics and Bayesian inference. So a virtue of uh, this equivalence is that we can design, we, we, we can find the, the best uh, free parameter to realize, to, to make neural network perform uh, optimal inference and decision making. Because this is basically Bayesian inference. So if we can select the uh, appropriate prior belief, then uh, its result should be, should be uh, equal to ideal uh, Bayesian uh, agent that perform uh, Bayesian inference and uh, decision making. Uh, so as a result, uh, in, in this demonstration, we show that uh, this uh, canonical neural network uh, can, uh, can solve this maze task, uh, which is a, an example of delayed reward task. So to achieve this, uh, the agent need to associate the future risk and past decisions. So we, uh, it is well known that, so for example, 
agent following reinforcement learning or Bayesian inference can achieve this type of uh, task. But the uh, point here is that we show that even, uh, even such a naive neural network with biologically plausible synaptic plasticity mechanism can achieve this uh, task. Uh, and so this, this, this is a, uh, one can think that this is a biological plausible process that, that realize such a uh, sentient behavior. So uh, finally, we summarize the equivalence uh, between neural network and the base again. So L equivalence between L and F uh, indicate the equivalence uh, between the neural activity and the posterior and the synaptic strengths correspond to posterior or parameters and the firing threshold correspond to uh, prior of stage or decisions. And initial synaptic weight correspond to uh, prior of parameters. And uh, finally, we show that uh, neuromodulation, any type of neuromodulation can be associated with uh, risk uh, implicit in the generative model. And the, as a result, the modulation of plasticity formally correspond to post-diction or pathodiction in the Bayesian formation. In summary, we show that the dynamics of canonical neural network that minimize the cost function uh, can be associated with, uh, can, can be cast as minimization of variation of free energy. So that uh, free energy principle is an apt, apt explanation for neural network. And uh, we show that uh, this theory can predict the serocolonization process of in vitro neural network. Uh, this offer the universal characterization uh, of uh, such network in terms of uh, Bayesian inference. And uh, the, this theory also indicate that there is moderation of heavy plasticity is sufficient to attain the uh, sentient behavior. So uh, we uh, we imagine that this is one of the most simple uh, mechanisms that, that realize uh, this sort of uh, sentient behavior. Okay, uh, so uh, the work uh, presented today uh, was a collaboration uh, with those uh, researchers. And finally, I'd like to mention that our unit is recruiting uh, one postdoc researcher working on theoretical neuroscience. So if you're interested in the detail will be announced shortly. So please check uh, the Rican CBS website or on the, my Twitter account. So that's all. Thank you for listening. <laughs>